Praise God. Welcome to Soaring Eagle Ministries today. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Good to be in the house of God. Uh, let's just uh, give people time to come on. Amen. Like we always say here at Semi, you know, call your friends, call the people you've been witnessing, call people that need a, a word from God, uh, need to be in church today. Guess what? We have a social media platform and, and uh, God is available. Amen. Yes, amen. So uh, we're going to give everybody a minute or so, but before we even go any further, we want to open up with prayer. Amen. And thanking God for what he's done for us. You know, we always say come to God and ask him stuff for us, but let's just start off with thanking him. Amen. Praise God. Yes, Lord, we thank you for this beautiful day, Father. Amen. Lord, this day that you have made, Father, Lord, and we, we want to rejoice and be glad in it, Father. Lord, that you're in our hearts, Father. Lord, we praise and honor you today, Father. Lord, we just lift up your name, Father. The reason we're here today, Father, is to lift your name up, Father. No other reason, Father, to give you the glory that you deserve. Yes. Lord, we love you today, Father. Lord, we thank you for your many gifts. Your, Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness to us, Father. Lord, sometimes when we fail, Father, but you, you never fail. You're always there all the time, Father. Lord, the enemy might tell us just the, just the opposite, Father. But you're right there with us, Father. And Lord, we thank you for who you are and what you mean to us today, Father. Praise your name, Father. Lord, we thank you just for the many gifts you give us, Father. Lord, for just this day, Father. Lord, we thank you for your many blessings, Father. Maybe some that we can't even see, Father. Lord, and the ones that are on their way, Father. Lord, we thank you for our health, Father. We, Lord, we thank you for our jobs. Lord, we thank you for you, Father. We thank you for our family, Father. Lord, we thank you for our church. Lord, having a thankful heart, Father. Lord, and all that you do for your people, Father. And the church says, amen, praise God. Lord, and let's also just pray for the sick today, amen. You know, just taking a little bit of time. Lord, we, Lord, we pray for the sick today. Lord, and we know some that are sick. Yes. Father, we ask you to touch their body, Father. Lord, people that are not feeling good, Lord, in their body and in their mind. Yes. Lord, we are sometimes we concentrate just on the body, Lord, but in their sick in their mind. Yes. Lord, they need help with, Lord, the thoughts, Father, that are going through their minds. Lord, they need you, Father. Lord, we pray, Lord, for healing mentally and physically, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Well, it's good to be back in the house of God. It's good back to be back from vacation. And uh, we had a good time, me and my wife, and visit some of our family uh, in Florida. But, you know, you look at that ocean and you see power. It looks beautiful, but it is powerful, too. I mean, just think the, the waters make up two-thirds of the earth. It's just amazing what God, his handiwork, mm -hmm. and just seeing those waves coming in and those waves going back out and see the high tide, the low tide, but that's God. Yeah. God created that. He created, man thinks he knows a lot. That's what man thinks, but God did it. Amen. God made this universe. God made this earth that we can live in and the air that we breathe. I mean, all the things you think about God, how he, he, he did it. He thought of it. Yes. He brought it all to existence. And we're able to see the majesty of his handiwork. Amen. Praise God. And I thank God for the time. Amen. Amen. But even before I even went on vacation, I heard the words divide and conquer. Just out of the blue, I heard divide and conquer. Divide. I was like, wow, what is that? That's a tough one. Yeah. Uh, you start looking up scripture, there's not a lot on that. I mean, you could, you know, make things into that, but there's not a lot of scriptures of divide and conquer. There's just a few that I found. But that was the words. And, uh, you know, this is how that message came, just by those few words. But we just want to say, good morning, Sammy. Amen. Praise amen. God. Amen. Welcome, what, to Sword Eagle Ministries. Amen. What, international. Amen. amen. And, you know, we're right here. I'm gonna, I would like to say sunny today, but it's not sunny today here in, here in Arizona. A little bit cloudy, 
I come up the hill, a little bit of rain, but we're here at Echo Ridge in Scottsdale, Arizona. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And, it, you know, it is still another beautiful day. I mean, we always laugh at work, and I think it's pretty much in Arizona, it's a common thing. You know, you go back east, you have snow days. Arizona, you have rain days. When it starts raining, people say, you know, I've, 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 people have stayed home just to watch the rain. And we laugh about it, but it's, it's, yeah. it's very, it's, it's, it doesn't come every day. It doesn't come months and months and months. When it starts raining, you're like, wow, it's different. And it just right. washes over everything, cleans everything up, amen. Wow. And just that, you know, the, the water, mm -hmm. amen, praise God. But today is a different day, amen. We want to welcome all of our listeners across all the platforms, and we thank God for those things, yes. amen, yes. praise God. And, you know, here in Sammy, we... We hope that you had a blessed week. Mm -hmm. But you know what? Just think about everything that you're going on. Everything that's going on in your life, you still have a blessed, a yes. blessed day. You're still here. Mm -hmm. You're still living. You're still breathing. And yes, we all have problems. Let me just, just tell you something. We all got problems. That's right. You, you're not any different than me. We all have things going on in our lives that's right. that we have to deal with. Amen. Praise God. That we have to go through. But that's, that's why they call it life. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody talks about the rich man. He's got everything. Well, that's what you think. But you don't know all the things he has to deal with all day long about all that money. Amen. And trying to keep everybody from stealing all that money. Amen. But, but we all have different issues going on. Amen. Praise God. Mm -hmm. You know what? We thank everybody for your prayers. Yes. Here at Semi, praying for the ministry. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for praying for us. And we're praying for you. Amen. Thank Praise you. God. And just remember, the top of our prayer is what? Souls, right? Mm -hmm. And where do we need? We need a building for those souls. Yes. Amen. Right. Praise God. So let's keep praying for that. Amen. Praise God. So today, I'm going to talk about divide and conquer. And like I said, you know, those are the words that I heard. And, uh, and not only that, the way God moves with me, He'll re reconfirm those words. Mm -hmm. I'll hear it multiple times. And I'll hear it in settings where that word should not even be used. Right. We're not talking, you know, I could hear this in a military movie, right? Probably easy to hear it in that. But that's, that's not where I heard it. Amen. Praise God. And you know what? Every message is different. That's right. Every message is different. It's, it's, God comes to you in different ways. Different words. Sometimes he even speaks to you differently. But that's how God is. People trying to figure God out. You can't figure God out. That's right. Man can't figure God out. He gave you your brain. Mm -hmm. Amen. Praise God. And you know, he shows you these words that he speaks to you multiple times. And the way I heard this is he said it once and then I heard it in a movie. And the movie had nothing to do, like I said, about militaries where you'd think you'd hear it. But that's what was said. You know, the enemy, just think about this. The enemy is always lurking around you. Yes, he is. That was lurking. lurking. He's always watching you. People think, well, yeah, nothing's going on. About it. The enemy is watching you. He's laying wait for you. Mm -hmm. These are the words that I heard. Trying to ambush you. Yes. Trying to divide and conquer. Mm -hmm. That's the name of his game. Mm -hmm. Divide and conquer. He's been using that tactic since the beginning of time. Since he was here. That's mm -hmm. right. Divide and conquer. He divided. He tried to divide the kingdom of God. And God threw him out. Divide and conquer. That's what he was trying to do to God. Right. Divide his king and conquer God. Right. And you know what? God just gave that right here. Mm -hmm. Right now. That's right. Good word. He wants to divide and conquer your family. He wants to divide and conquer your relationship with your wife and husband. Mm -hmm. Just think about this. Yes. 
easy to say these words, but since time, this has been happening. Right. Divide and conquer. He wants to divide and conquer this church. Yes. Mm -hmm. As I said, this is the name of his game. That's right. Divide and conquer. Mm -hmm. People said Julius Caesar, they said in Webster Dictionary came up. No, he, he didn't come up with that. Matter of fact, Joshua faced that when he went into the promised land. Divide and conquer. Yeah. God gave him the tactic and the strategy to go forth into the land because they were not strong enough to fight them all. Divide and conquer. Divide and conquer. That's right. It's a good word. Amen. The enemy does not care how he does it. Mm -hmm. That's right. Now, the enemy doesn't care who he hurts. Mm -hmm. That's right. Amen. Help us, Lord. Furthermore, he's hoping there is collateral damage. Mm -hmm. That's how he divides and conquers. And you might be saying, there's nothing, to, no, listen to what I'm saying. Divide and conquer. Divide and conquer. And that's what he's working on. That's, that's, why, that's what he's working to do. That's what he wants to do. You might not think anything's going on with you, but that's what he wants to do. Divide and conquer. And you can use divide and conquer in everything of your life. He wants to divide and conquer your success. That's true. He wants to take away everything that God has given you. All right, now. Mm -hmm. It's not just one thing, one place in your life. It's every place he wants to enter into your life. Okay. Divide and conquer. Okay. Yeah. If you're having trouble in your relationships, he wants to divide you and conquer. You might think you're on the right side. You're on the wrong side. He wants to divide and conquer. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's the name of the game. That's right. And when I'm done here today, that's what you're, you're going to hear, divide and conquer. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. you can't say the word one time. It's got to be repetitive. You've got to hear it. You've got to hear it. You've got to hear it. Mm -hmm. Because that's what he wants. He wants to divide and conquer you. The definition for divide and conquer. To inflict injury. Inflicted on someone other than the intended target. This is, I'm sorry, this is collateral damage. The definition for collateral damage is injury inflicted on somebody other than the intended target. It says specifically civilian casualties of a military operation. But that's the enemy's strategy. Because when he divides and conquers, he inflicts it not just on you, he, everybody around you. Yeah. See, the people, you, you got to get wise to his tactic. That is his main tactic right there. Yes, yes. That's his MO. That's his mission to accomplish. Uh -huh. And one scripture that I found it was in Matthew 12, 25. It's, it's the main scripture, but we'll read a little bit more. But tw verse 25 says, Jesus knew what the Pharisees were thinking. So he said to them, every kingdom that is divided against itself will be destroyed. Yeah. And any city or family that is divided against itself will not continue. Now, if you read this passage, and I'm taking this, I'm taking just this verse out of it. Because this is all I got. But if you go into this passage, and you know the Pharisees. Mm -hmm. So like we've got the same people here on earth right now with us. They know more than God. God's doing something. No, God's not doing something. They're against, they're against the living church. There is them and there's us. Why does God say, if I'm with you, If I'm with you, it's more than enough. Right. It's, he talks about against us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So us, us, is God, us and God are together. Yes. It's everybody against us. Mm -hmm. 
Every other establishment doesn't believe the way God believes is against God. Now, some people have different, different walks in life and different places in the word. That's okay. God loves everybody. Yes. But I'm talking about the ones against us. Yeah. But these people were against God. Yeah. The Pharisees. Pharisees. Whatever God, whatever Jesus did, they came against him. Yeah. I mean, and here's the funny thing about it. They weren't doing these miracles. They weren't doing what Jesus was doing. Nobody was. How can you see somebody's eyes opened up and, and lame people walk and you know and you know and you know those people are not are, were injured or not whole yes. because this is the church in that day these are these are the Pharisees that walk to and fro and pray in front of people to see them pray but they knew people that were sick Religion. they they knew that they couldn't do anything for them but Jesus comes along he starts healing everybody. Who is he? Jealous. They're jealous of Jesus. Heal of people. You'd rather somebody be hurt, not healed, than have Jesus come on the scene and start healing people. What, what, what he was doing. He was doing the will of the Father. And you see over here in Matthew it says, and this subheader says, Jesus' power is from God. And, it's, and that's so true. They didn't have that power. Mm -hmm. They couldn't do the things Jesus did. And he knew everything that they thought and tried to do. Mm -hmm. And that angers people. That's right. That angers people. When people say something, you say just the opposite. Here's the facts. Boom. They're like, they can't, then they can't refute, then they go somewhere else, then they go somewhere else. Then they start getting angry because yeah. there's no end road. But these people, they thought they knew more than Jesus. Mm -hmm. And they tried to trap him every which way they could. Right. Tra trapping Jesus. Right. Jesus came on down here to walk him up, and he got mad trying to tell Jesus what to do. Yeah. He come to save him. And they're, try, he, they're trying to kill him. Saying he's not of God. Yes. He's not of God. The things that he does is of, of Satan. First of all, I'd ask him, when did you see Satan do that? Now, these are things that have never been done before. There's nowhere in the books of his, there's nowhere else, there's no other books on the planet that says all this was going on before, before Jesus showed up on the scene. There's not another book. There's no. There's nobody. There's not man on earth today can go get another book and sit in contrary to the Bible, because there there isn't one. <laughs> and then some people say, "Oh, somebody just sat down and started writing this, these fables." How? How? How can you write this? How could you think this like this happened and then have all these? This is not a movie. But this is real life. real life. Jesus said, I'm going to come on down there and I'm going to walk among men. Yeah. And I'm going to see the life that they live. And I'm going to see the, the daily, the daily grind, the grind of what they do. I'm going to be right there with them. Yes. But see, here, here's Jesus having opposition uh -huh. from the enemy. Jesus himself. Right. Well, he, where he can call the angels out of, he can call... As more as he need, as many as he needs, and that's you know we think about a movie that that would be great. Jesus said, "Yeah, I had enough of you, jokers. All right, come on the scene, like you see in a movie, right? Yeah. The good guys win, take everybody hostage. And that's it. Now, now we're living, you know, a nice promised land. But he had to fight the same things we do: yeah. the enemy, the enemy, the enemy." Amen. Verse twenty-two. Then some people brought to Jesus a man who was blind and could not talk because he had a demon. Uh -huh. You know, the world right now, the world, the world's getting kind of wise to demons. Before, you know, 30, 40 years ago, oh, that's a bunch of nonsense. But I've heard people talk around me uh -huh. to say, that, that, that person has a demon. That, that's not even a Christian. Uh -huh. See, that person has a demon. <laughs> and you're like, <coughs> see, even the world can see that. But see, that's how far we've come. Thank you, Lord. 
Jesus healed the man so that he could talk and see. That's right. All the people were amazed. How would you not be? Especially if you knew this man. It's like your brother. Jesus comes on the scene. Now he's, he's, he was blind. Now he can see he's healed. Yeah. You're going to be ecstatic. Mm -hmm. And you're going to not only that, you're going to run around and tell everybody. That's right. That's true. There's this guy over there that we just seen that he just healed my brother. Remember him, Joe? Yeah, Joe. Yeah, he's blind. He, he can see 2020 now. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. Who, who, who are we talking about? What man? Yeah, Jesus. Oh, oh. Yeah, I heard about him. But see, that's that fame. That fame that was going out. They didn't like that either. That's right. Because they couldn't do these miracles. Mm -hmm. wow. But see, here goes the enemy. Divide and conquer. How, how are we going to get rid of this one? See, same tactic. Same tactic. When the Pharisee heard this, they said, Jesus used the power of Beelzebub, which is Satan, yeah. the ruler of demons, mm -hmm. to force demons out of people. Jesus knew what the Pharisees were thinking. There you go. Yeah. Hmm. How, would that, how would that be nice to know everything that somebody said before they even said it? Man, you could really think of, I mean, you could really get ahead of the story, couldn't you? Every, and this is what Jesus said. So he said to them, every kingdom that is divided against itself will be destroyed. That's right. I mean, there were some bold words, right to the point. Mm -hmm. And any city that is divided will be destroyed. And any family that is divided will be destroyed. And any city or family that is divided against itself will not continue. And if Satan forces himself out, then Satan is divided against himself, as kingdoms will not continue. He's like, what are you talking about? That doesn't even make sense. Yeah. So he uses their words against him. Yeah. You say that I used the power of Beelzebub to force out demons. If that is true, then what power do your people use to force out demons? Yeah. So they will be your judges. But if I use the power of God's spirit to force out demons, yeah. then the kingdom of God has come to you. Mm -hmm. Wow. Whoa. Right back at you. Did you know that really burned? What are you going to come up with next? Wow. He, and he goes on to give the parable. If anyone wants to enter a strong person's house and steal his things, he must first tie up the strong person. Right. He then steal the things from the house. Whosoever is against me, who, whoever is not with me, is against me. Yes. <laughs> Did you hear what Jesus said? Yes. Whoever is not with me. That's why I said us and Jesus, us and God, right? Yes. We're, we're together. Mm -hmm. So it's us fighting against the forces. Mm -hmm. And we got the power. Just like he said, I got the power of God's spirit. Amen. Whoever does not work with me is working against me. Told them flat out, this is the way it is. Yes. How, how would you like somebody to come on the scene and tell the establishment that you're going to come and follow me. Yeah. What you, what Moses and all those books, but I'm here. I'm here. Mm -hmm. There's laws that were set up, but Jesus is here now, walking among us. And you know what? They're always trying to discredit Jesus. Yes, they were. Of what he was doing. He was healing the hurt and the sick. Mm They were jealous of who he was and what he was doing. And you know what? He knew that in their heart. That was in their heart. Yes, that was in their heart. But we come over here and look at Luke. See, that's the great thing about the books of the Bible, the gospel. You can see what Luke talked about. So Luke... And I don't have a lot of scripture today. All right. But, I mean, this is what God gave. Is it Luke 11, 14 through 23? Now, Luke, Luke, this is Luke's version. 
God's, you know, this is what God impressed on him to write. He says one time Jesus was sending out a demon who could not talk. I mean, that's where he starts off. He goes, when the demon came out, the man who had been able to speak then spoke, the people were amazed. Yeah. But some of them said, Jesus, use it. Now, he didn't say Pharisees. I was like, who, who are these people? Who, who are these people? The Pharisees. But some of them said, Jesus used the power of Beelzebub, the ruler of demons, to force out to force demons out of his people. Other people wanting to test Jesus asked him to give them a sign from heaven. But knowing their hearts, he said to them, every kingdom that is divided against itself will be destroyed. And a family that is divided against itself will not continue. So if Satan is divided against himself, his kingdom will not continue. You say that I use the power of Beelzebub to force out demons, but I but if I use the power of Beelzebub to force out demons, what power do your people use to force demons out? I love that. It, what, what are you guys using? <laughs> They're like, oh, oh really? <laughs> so they will be your judges. But if I use the power of God to force out demons, then the kingdom of God has come to you. When a strong person with many weapons guards his house, his possessions are safe. This is, this is, this is what Luke's writing. But when pe someone stronger comes and defeats him, the strong one who takes away the weapons, the first man trusted and will give away the possessions. Yeah. Anyone who is not with me is against me. And anyone who does not work with me is working against me. Luke Saying the same thing, just a little bit different. But you see the difference between the two. And you know, it's always good to hear from two people that are there. It's sort of like an accident, right? Mm -hmm. So you have a police officer show up on the scene, and he says, huh, what happened? Mm -hmm. Now he might have, say there's two vehicles involved. So he'll get this driver's point of view, this driver's point of view, and if they're sensible people, you know, so I've been in wrecks before, say, so hey, it's my fault. What? I, I don't understand why. If, if you caused it, you, everybody makes mistakes, I did it. What would, what's the point? Wow. It's what you got insurance for. But also, the officer or whoever's on will go over and ask if he sees an innocent bystander. Wow. Hey, what happened? Mm -hmm. So, this is what you see. You see Matthew writing about it and Luke. And just remember, that subheader in both those chapters talks about Jesus' powers from God. And, you know, that's a reminder to us that our power is from above. Mm -hmm. yes. We need God's power mm -hmm. against the wicked enemy, the one that tries to divide and conquer us. Now, before I was trying to tell you what divide and conquer said, but I was a little bit ahead of myself, but Webster Dictionary says, this is what it says about divide and conquer. To make a group of people disagree. Mm -hmm. Divide and conquer. Right. And fight with one another right. so they will not join together against one. Isn't that what exactly what he does? Yes. Mm -hmm. wow. His military strategy is to divide and conquer everything in your life. And, and, and at all fronts. We were talking months ago that it's an assault on all fronts. That's the way he likes to do it. He, and not only that, he likes to divide everything. Yes, he does. And hit you on multiple fronts. Oh. And see, God knew that the children, the Israelites, could not conquer everybody in the promised land at one time. Not only that, God had to get them there. And then he had to show his power, which he'd already done before. Wow. I mean, just coming out of Egypt alone was, I mean, I, I'd, I'd still be talking about it. I mean, we, we were slaves in a foreign land. With a, 
a mean taskmaster. And we cried out, and he, he, he even went further and wanted more. But God heard his people. Yes. Amen. Just like today, God's heard his people. Amen. And he said, that's enough. And the reason they were there, why were they there? They were there because of their sins. That's right. And yes, it had been years and years and years, but God finally heard, said, that's enough. Yeah. But they came out of Egypt. And what God did to destroy the mighty king that was there is just unbelievable how he took them out. That they could never rise again. They could never come after you. But now they're here going into the promised land. And, and they've already seen that. But God said, God already knew they couldn't do it. God had to help them. That's right. God, just like God's got to help us. That's right. Now, if you're trusting in other things than God, then you're trusting in the wrong things. Wrong thing. Point blank. You, you're trusting in the wrong things. Right. You're not a wise man. You're a foolish man. That's right. help us, Lord. Because God has everything. And God knows Everything that's going on. That's right. He knows everything behind the scenes that you cannot see. God knows all about it. You don't know about it. Your friends don't know about it. I don't know about it. Your father don't know about it. God knows about it. God knows what's going on. Right. And he knows how the enemy works. And he knows where he's got. He has his people. God has his people. God, ha God has his army. Yes. God don't have an army just sitting there doing, up there doing nothing. That's what people think. He's just up there. you are living in the fairyland. You know, this is just like you see in a movie. You know, this is, that's not it. No. That's not the kingdom of God. No. They're on the move. Mm -hmm. They know they can come down to this earth and take it anytime they want to. How would, how would you like to know that? They can come down here at any time and take over. Uh. No, anytime. Anytime God said, boom, we're going. They're, all, they're we're ready. Not only that. They're doing stuff right now. Mm -hmm. On all fronts, just like I said, the enemy is attacking all fronts. God's got his people on the front. Yes. Right there with you. Mm -hmm. The fiery darts of the wicked. Mm -hmm. Those principalities and powers <coughs> that you cannot see. God's army is fighting that for you. That's right. That's right. Thank you Lord. When he tried and divide and conquer, that's why it says us and God. Okay. It's you and God. It's your people and God. And that's God's devouring and conquering the enemy. Because there's nobody stronger than God. Nobody. No matter what people say and what people do, there's nobody stronger than God. In his army. And we're part of that army. That's why he says, pray to me for the power. That's why he says, when you're weak, I'm strong. Amen, praise God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. The enemy does not want you to be successful. That's right. Because I know that. Do you know that? Do you know systematically he wants to take everything away from you? That's right, he does. You think, though, that's foolishness. No, that's mm -hmm. being wise. Mm -hmm. God, but God wants... But God wants you to be all he has called you to be and yes. do the will of the Lord. Yes. But God wants. Mm -hmm. The enemy wants things for you, but God wants. He wants you to use your talents. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's some people that I know that got talent. And I, I, I just like, I, you've got a gift from God. Mm -hmm. I can't do what you do. I don't have those gifts. And you see these gifts of people, he's like, why don't you use them for God? Yeah. He gave them to you. He wants you to use your talents, your gifts for the Lord. He wants you to use everything he has given you to expand the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. And he will bless you. And multiply what you have. Mm -hmm. Do you know God used parables in the Bible about talents? Mm -hmm. 
talking about the, the gentleman that he gave talents to. He gave one and gave five or gave ten. But look what they did with the talent. And then he eventually took the talents of the ones that weren't using it and gave it to the other ones. But he wants you to use what he's given you. Yes. <coughs> he is the God of more than enough. More than enough, yes. Not the God of not enough. Mm -hmm. Not enough. I don't have enough. That's not him. Just like I said before, some people said Julius Caesar was the one that first used these tactics. The divide your enemy so you can reign approach is a tribute to Julius Caesar. He successfully applied this to conquer Gaul in the 22nd century, or, or the 22 centuries ago. But I, I, don't, I don't believe that because I know that Joshua used the same tactic, amen, because God yes. gave it to him. God gave it to him. God showed him how to defeat the enemy. He said, son, don't go at him all by yourself. And not only that, don't go to the left, right. He went right straight through it. And then he turned left and destroyed them on the left and then all. He went to the south and then the north. But that was God. God showed him the tactic to use against the enemy. Because nobody says you can't come and go right straight through Jericho. Nobody's ever went over that wall. But God took down that big wall. God did it. God did it for the children of God. Deuteronomy 7, 22 reads, And the Lord your God will drive out those nations before you little by little. Now that, that was the word that came forth. Little by little. There's the word. You will not be able to destroy them at once. This is referring to the children of Israel coming to the promised land and taking possession of it. Basically, it detailed the book of Joshua. The process used was very interesting. It appeared as though it was planned by a brilliant military strategist, and God is. The land was conquered in stages, just as God had said little by little. That was what the scripture said. The children crossed the Jordan River and took the central position first. You see, now, that's not normally how you do it. Then they conquered the south portion. Finally, the north part was conquered. God's plans always work. God's plans. He knows what he's doing. And he knows how to get you from here to there. As I said earlier, the enemy is always lurking around you, watching you, laying wait for you, trying to ambush you, and trying to conquer and divide you. This is what I wrote when I came up here. Divide and conquer everything from everything good from the Lord in your life. Matter of fact, he wants you to be miserable. Not having anything. Divide and conquer your family. Divide and conquer your church. Divide and conquer your relationship with God. Oh, he can't do that. He's got tactics that you've never seen before. And this is one of them. Has anybody witnessed this going on in your life? Or can you not see it going on because your eyes are blinded? Mm -hmm. By what you are going through? There's some people blinded by what's going on because they're so immersed in what they're going, what's going on in their life that they can't see what the enemy's doing. <coughs> and, but that is where the enemy wants you, right there, confused. That's his strategy. Divide and conquer you. 
And you know what? He doesn't care how he does it. That's right. He wants to stop God in your life. He wants to stop the kingdom of God. He wants to stop the church, the children of the living God. The children, us, the sons and God, the sons and daughters of God. The Bible says in 2 Chronicles 7, 14. Now, if you look at this scripture, this is Solomon. Talking about Solomon. And the Lord appeared to Solomon. The only, there's a few times in the word of God you see the Lord appearing. And he appeared to Solomon. First of all, he promised David. He made a promise and pact with David. He says, you know what, David? You've served me. I'm going to bless your house. And they're going to rule. But now he appeared to Solomon. Now David's gone off the scene. Now Solomon's in charge. And he appears to him, and in verse 11, he says, uh, Solomon finished the temple of the Lord in his royal palace. Now, they talk about this kingdom, or this temple that he built, is matched by none other. He used the best of everything that there was. He had kingdoms all over the world laying stuff at his feet, yep. paying homage. And he used the very best of everything. There was not one thing that was not done to the best of all there was. The best wood, the, be the gold, the, the diamonds, the myrrh. I mean, everything that could be built, the most beautiful thing ever built, was laid at his feet. Amen. And he used it for God. And the one thing I always think about when you talk about building the temple, I think about David and his men, his chosen men. They took all of their wealth and gave it to the Lord. Wow. All, the, all the fighting and all the armies that they faced, their whole, all these armies that tried to conquer and divide David and God, they couldn't do it. So David took everything. He laid it down at God's feet and says, it's for you. It's for your kingdom. The kingdom that we're going to build here on the earth, the physical kingdom, the physical temple of where you're going to live. He says, I give you everything that you helped me accomplish. That's, a, that's amazing. Because that's why, that's why he says, he's a heart after me. And his men seen the exact same thing. David was a king that sat on the ivory tower and sent his men into battle. David was right there with him. That's where he started. He's right on the field, facing that giant. Mm -hmm. How dare you talk about my Lord like that? Mm -hmm. I seen you help me rip apart a lion and, and protect me and give me this spirit. Come on, and no, I'm not going to stand for this. Yeah. But that's David. But now here's here's Solomon. He says he had success in doing everything he planned in the temple of the Lord and his own palace. He built his palace like no other. Then the Lord appeared to Solomon that night and said to him, I have heard your prayers and have chosen this place for myself to be a temple for sacrifices. I may stop. Listen, listen what the Lord said. Is I may stop the sky from sending rain. When people say they have power. The Lord says, I may stop the sky from sending rain. If I want to. I may command the locusts to destroy the land. And I may send sickness to my people. But this is where I'm going. Then if my people who are called by my name. Mm -hmm. My people. So this, this, is, this right here is for all of us. Yeah. This verse right here is for all of us. Everything that you're ever going through. All the things that you're going through. It's this right here. If you're down in the trenches, down in, you don't, you, you can't see the light. The Bible says, humble yourself. Mm -hmm. First of all, you, you're fighting in your own strength. 
You're fighting in your own strength. You're, you're fighting physically things that you can see. You, you're not fighting the other things. If they will pray and seek me and stop their evil ways, I will hear them from heaven. I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. I will, I, I will. It says, I will. That's the amazing thing about God. That's why I always say there's nobody like him. You can't understand his love for his people. Just like he did for the Israelites. Just, you know what? Just stop what you're doing. Ask for forgiveness. Which, Draw a line in the sand, start start again. That that's that's God. Uh -huh. Man's not like that. No. You know, there's people today in prison that have done things that people say, you know, it was bad. But God for, God forgives them. Man might not, but God says, I will. Mm -hmm. I, I don't care what you did. Horrible things against society. But God says, I will forgive you. You see, that's God. When you say, yeah, I understand, you don't understand. You don't understand his love for his people. Sure. The love for the human race. We think it's all oh, the old rugged cross. It's more than that. That was our hope. That was our only hope. That he'd come do it himself. Amen. And just like today with the enemies using all these taxes against the church, uh -huh. against the people of God. And some of us cannot see what he's doing. If you're fighting, quit fighting. That's, right. That's what he says. That's what the word says. Mm -hmm. If they will pray and seek me and stop their evil ways. Calling on the Father. Yes. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Yes, Jesus. And us as a church today, we act like none of this stuff is going on. It's going on right in the church. Yes, it is. Huge Everywhere. And we can't have a blind eye of what's going on. He wants to divide and conquer the living church. Amen. Every family, every person in church, he wants to take you out of church. He wants you to take you away from the people of God. Mm -hmm. right. He wants you to be disassembled with the church of God. That's, right. that's his tactic, divide. When you say, oh, well, I'm going to leave that church, that's exactly what he wants. That's right. That He wants you to act that way and, and not seek God and do your own thing mm -hmm. and get huffy. But that's what he wants you to do. That's right. You're playing right into the strategy of divide and conquer. Mm -hmm. And then three or four more churches down the line, you say, well, how come I don't feel... God in this church, in this church, maybe it's you. But there's a lot of things going on in the living church of God. Yes, there is. And God says we need to be wise to what the enemy is doing. We need God in our life more than ever. That's right. We might show the world that we have a perfect life, but God wants to be the center. He wants to be in the center, and he wants to be the center of your life. That is the overcome, Lord. One example, and I thought this was kind of funny, divide and conquer. And I, and, and I think most people can relate to this. Sort of like, a husband and wife had children. It's such a it's such an easy thing, but I've seen this happen growing up in our family. If you want to do something, you go ask mom. Mom will probably give you the answer you want, right? You, that's what you're thinking. So your mom, you know, she's wise to your tactics. She says, "Well, go ask your father." <laughs> there you go. That's not what I want. I wanted you. To, I wanted you to tell me what to do. I'll go off and do it. it Dad asks where I'm at. You say, hey, I told me to go do this. But that's divide and conquer, right? Yes. Just as a, a little thing, as a child. So, well, man, I can't. If I go ask that person, 
I know he's probably not getting the answer I want. I see that even in the office space. Yeah. Where people ask person, ask, they go down the line and ask people till they get the answer they want. That's divide and conquer. Yeah. But I thought that was kind of a little bit comical. But, sure. but that's, you know, just another form of it. But that's really what it is. Trying to get what you want. But that's what the enemy is doing to you anyway. That's what he's trying to do to you. He's trying to get what he wants. He wants you to do the things that he wants you to do. And sometimes you think it's the things that you want to do, but it's the enemy. Right. You're playing right into his hand. Oh, right into his hand. That's right. There's a many a people today that are looking back over the years and say, I shouldn't have done that. I'm here because I did that. I'm here because I acted like that. And you said you heard Frank Sinatra says, I did it my way. Well, that, that's that's fine. You can sing all, you can sing that. But where are you at? Where are you at? You can put that facade onto the world and, that you did what you wanted. You did it your way. But I don't think you lived that long. I think maybe early 60s. I could be wrong, but I'm just saying that's not living it your way. I don't want to, yeah, that's, that's early. But I'm just saying, the enemy tries to get us in all these things that are not good for us. Tries to keep us off track, right? Yes, he does. Divide and conquer, divide and conquer. And that's, that's, really, that's really what God, that's what he told me. Yes. Just like that. I'm like, that, I said, man, this is, I don't know this one. <laughs> I, I can't draw something that I, I guess in the back of my mind it fits this. It was just completely different. Yes, it is. It's true. But God knows what we need to hear. Yes, he does. And there's people right now saying, that's not for me. Yes, it is for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. Because he said, humble yourself. Yes, Jesus. And pray. That's right. Humble yourself and pray. We can't have the pride of life. Amen. Praise God. You know it says in the word that if we abide in him, he abides in us. Yes, yes. Let's be wise to the trick of the enemy. Jesus, Jesus. Ask ourselves, why is the enemy fighting you so hard today? Mm -hmm. right. You know what? Here's, here's another one. Take some time out. Take time out. And, and, and obviously pray and seek God. But you know, God wants you to think about the things that you're doing. I mean, he gave you this mind that you can think through things. Yes. Yes, he did. Some people say, "My, I can't, you, my, your mind, your, no, your mind is not your enemy. He gave you a mind. And, and if you're living and abiding in him, you're going to, like we just heard, have the mind of Christ. Amen. And having wisdom. Mm -hmm. I try to live by the rules, not make a decision on the fly. Mm -hmm. if you ask me to do something or whatever the case may be, I try to I take my time to say what I'm going to do. That's good. The enemy knows that you're a child of God. Mm -hmm. he, he knows that. He knows who you are. Mm -hmm. When everybody's turn around and say, I I'm nobody. The enemy knows you. Just like God knows you. The enemy knows you who you are too. Right. See, that's the same lie he tells everybody. Yes. You're nothing. You're not going to do anything. God don't need you. He can't use you. I mean, he tells everybody the exact same thing. That's it. That's his tactic. Mm -hmm. Get you over here by yourself, divide you from the body, and there you go. He's got you. Yes. All by yourself. out there. He wants you to be a lone wolf. But God wants you in the family of God, where there is protection, amen, in wisdom, in fellowship, unity, amen, praise God. God wants his church to be in unity. God wants the families in the church to be in unity. God wants relationship, brothers and sisters to be in unity. God wants parents to be in unity. God wants brothers and sisters in unity. That's what that's what that's the word. 
He wants us in unity. Amen. Praise God. And just remember, God loves you so much. Amen. Praise God. Well, church, that's what I have today. Thank you for giving me the time. And uh, may God bless you this week. And uh, we'll see you back here on um, Wednesday night. And just remember, all of our services are Mountain Time. I know it's broadcast on the World Wide Web. Yes. Amen. Worldwide. Okay. God knew exactly. God knew exactly when He gave these young men to create the internet. And how about World Wide Web? I mean, just to come up with that right there. www. Da 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 da. Worldwide. So God's worldwide. He, he knew it all the way back then. Came from the Lord. Amen. But uh, we thank God for the platform that he gives us. Amen. Gives the church today. Praise God. We, uh, we pray for you guys and we thank you for your support. Amen. Praise God. Let's close with prayer. But just remember, it is mountain time wherever you are in the world today. Uh, Arizona time. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this day, Father. Lord, we thank you for this message, Father, that I hope you encourage people and show what the enemy is up to. Yes, Lord. Amen. Praise God. Lord, and Lord, let us just fight the good battle, Father. Lord, lean into you, Father. Lord, talk to you about what's going on in our lives, Father. Lord, that you could help us, Father. Yes. Lord, we just pray for your church, Father. Like I said, I know we're fighting. Many battles, Father. Lord we, Lord, we pray for your church for strength. Lord, we pray for your church to call out to you for strength. Amen. Praise God. Because, yes. Lord, we need your strength mm -hmm. to help us day to day, Father. The enemy wants us to use up our own strength and become weary in the battle, Father. Yes. But, Lord, we need to lean in yes. and to, to trust you, Father. Lord, you know how to help us, Father. Lord, we pray for you. all the things that are going on, Father. Lord, and we pray for our brothers and sisters in foreign countries, Father, that are running for, they're running for their lives. Yes, Father, we think everything is so horrible, you know, maybe in our own lives, but Father, there's people got some life-changing decisions. Just, just, Lord, help them, Father. Lord, those ones that are calling out on you, Father. Lord, yes. we ask you, Father, to intervene, Father. Lord, that, that whatever the tactic of the enemy, Father, Lord, we ask you to help them. Confuse the enemy, Father. Confuse the enemy, Father. People say, God, God, step in, do what it wants. God is the answer, amen, praise God. Lord, and we pray for the church body, Father. We pray for our church. Lord, uh, here at Semi, Father, all of our members, Father, people that are connected to us, Father. Lord, we pray for all of them, you know, Lord, that you'd, Lord, that you'd answer, Lord, their prayers, Father. Pray for the president. Lord, we pray for our president, Joe Biden, Father. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we pray for, yes, Father, he has, yes, I did see that he had COVID, Father, Lord, we ask you, Lord, to just touch his body. Lord, uh, he is the man of the hour, Father, that you put in place. Father, we ask you, Lord, to help him. Amen. Praise God, Father. We ask you also, Father, to touch this ministry, Father. Lord, touch the leadership. Father, give us strength. Lord, we thank you for your many blessings too, Father. Lord, we give you honor and praise today, Father. Lord, we lift your name up. Hallelujah, Father. And we thank you for this day. And the church says... Amen. Amen. Praise God. I'll well, see you Wednesday night. Yes. Amen.